considering they've shown up to play, and AZ certainly look, looking good today. Maybe there's a world we could see a 2-0, at least for me. I'm holding out for a third. Let's find out, though. Pissed around right in front of us here between G2 and North. We've got G2, T-side, their map pick here in the series. North, again, a lot of utility. Not playing for a grenade combo, though. Cajun will get dinked in the apartments. He's going to have to fall out, go back towards A. There's a triple B setup as well. G2 don't know about that just yet. Set up with the bomb in alt mid. But we'll see where things end up. Nexus spots one at bare minimum at B and tries to keep them passive, tries to keep them set up. Oh, and G2 showing no banana presence. North are going to start to pressure in through banana. However, this isn't as much of a blessing as it might look like. It's only left two players oh. at the A site and they are both gone. Christo removes one on his mid play. He's got players moving in tow behind him. And so North, they are here knocking on the door very, very quickly, but they're a man down in this retake now. A three on four required. And that nade finds a lot of damage. Hunter has the round dead to right. It's four kills from him to put the pistol on the board for G2. That's the start they needed, right? Like G2, they had a really rough opening half two to Virgo, and I don't think they ever really recovered from it. Um, so yeah, starting off with a pistol round, certainly gonna bring a whole new bit of life to this roster. Great shots from Hunter in the post plan. Also gone in with a force in round number two. They've got the Eagles, MP9, it's a good bit of utility, and a bit of a faster round as well, as they look to push middle three, running right down, and they've actually not been seen as well. Kenny just know. North have played tucked. That's excellent. They delay it, and they wait till the flash comes down. They pop late into that position. G2 think they're safe in middle. They couldn't be further from the truth. They may still have the bomb, but that's pretty much it here. North own middle. Hunter going to fire back through the smoke. Does manage to drop MSL. Amanek coming from the top side drops Christo as well. So G2 one by one are scraping their way back into this round. Yeah, as he's been able to get his hands on a Galil and he's run away with it. Now looking to hold Banana. Amanek still waiting in ult mid. And G2, the one thing they do have a decent bit of is time in this round. They're going to slow it right down, knowing that North could get caught making some mistakes here. AZ actually lands a bit of damage through that smoke. He's still spamming away. Doesn't want to risk going down. The rest of G2 are heading over here towards top mid. Now, Gade and Cajun are in this position. Cajun's actually pushed into the apartment. He's about to get wrapped onto, but he does respond. Deals with Amanek, and now... G2, they've been made aware that there's two players here at this A side of the map. What's the plan going to be? They look to try and bypass long, and the timing on this push is absolutely phenomenal from G2. They've caught the perfect timing. Yeah. Gade, he just, swan, he just swung long moments ago, and now G2 swung in their way through T-spawn. AZ surely has no idea. I mean, to be fair, he probably has an idea now because they've yeah. given up long. And so this is something that is anticipated. Oh, AZ's yeah. got his eyes on the prize, what? but not able. No He's time, won it. doesn't matter. Classic G2 round here. <laughs> of course, no bomb plots, not needed. Apart from sometimes they actually are needed. And this one is one of those times. Yeah, you, you can't blame G2 no, too no, much for that no. one. That's more making the best of what you got. North certainly bled the round time out by default, right? By by pushing mid and smoking off T-Ramp. Like, G2 are, are getting smoked in their own spawn. Like, that's a bit hard. And G2, they hit a great timing, but unfortunately, even just trading that kill, or even just taking the kill, rather, onto the solo B player, takes long enough that they can't plant. That's a problem. Miss Smoke certainly doesn't help either. If that was down, you see the bomb come through for G2 there. Right now, though, it's an entry from Hunter, the hero AK, one of the two guns in this round, and he's found a kill with it. So low in the process, swaps it out to Kenny, who really should give it elsewhere. He's, again, got no armor. Nexa does, and he'll happily take that weapon. So, luckily, Deeg's available on the other two. But a man up for G2. They're going to move up middle. Cajun's here. He knows they are nearby. Jackson's in the boiler. He's got the angle. Great shot for Cajun. Has a chance to fall back as well. Very safe stuff. North have two per site. Anchored inside as well. So no information. If G2 full commit here out of apartments with a util, it's going to be potentially uh, an upset here for G2. Potentially a force by victory. North need to have their wits about them. Here it is, the app drop coming on in. Gade still in the pit, still going unchecked. He's allowed to do a lot of damage here, buying time. 
now relegated down to only the Deagle and they're wrapping around, but Ooh. Gade unfaltering, unmovable down in the pit. They finally deal with him. It's Hunter to dig him away. But Christo and MSL, 2v2. They've got the HP advantage. They've got mollies. They've got nades. They can keep this bomb trapped in the pit. But G2, you are hinging on Hunter making a big play right here, right now. That is the only way the bomb is getting out from the pit, is if Hunter rids them from the round, and he has done it. He wraps back through the apartments, deals with them both. Bit of a question mark as to how no one from North considered that as an option there, but I guess anticipating that Hunter had dropped down into the pit was maybe trying to double swing with the bomb down in pit. Oh, he's just so good, Harry. He's 10 and 0. Look at the scoreboard for G2. The next best player is 2 and 1. Hunter is a one man army. We have two players on G2 who don't have kills yet, and they still have more rounds than North. Dear, oh dear. That's going to break North, not just spiritually, but economically as well. They are left to just pistols, and no Kev behind it either. This is almost a double eco for North. It seems like G2 haven't imparted that much loss bonus their way. We're just so early into the game that, you know, if you even if you win pistol, or if, if, you know, you need to find those conversions. You need to go clean 3-0 up. Otherwise, it's what happens if you're on the CT side. You you just get beaten. Because go, going back and forth is only going to favor the T's in terms of money. Rebuys are so much cheaper. You can get extra bonus money from bomb plants. North want to gamble here. What else have they got? I mean, nothing to lose, everything to gain. So moving three inside of B. MSL solo middle, gonna try and spot them. He's gonna die here, and uh, Jax, uh, that's an opening kill that can send G2 right into the A bomb site. They should avoid this stack. Hunter's gonna look for a clear, but instead he walks in and gets double dinked by a USP. Doesn't even really see the boost. Luckily, G2 aren't gonna commit behind that kill, you would think. Actually, oh no, there. Oh yeah, yeah, get the bomb. Get out of there. Good. Jack put the site. Look for a second like they wanted to flank B. But instead, Nexa and Kenny are just containing the problem inside of B. And letting them get planted elsewhere. He turns around. He turns into death. And AZ, he turns Nexa into mincemeat. But he won't get much further than this position. They're cutting off his banana rotate. This should be his death. Oh. Oh, yeah. Gave him room for a second there, but not too long. And that's the thing, right? I, I would like to think that G2 are able to recover here on their map pick. I'm really hoping that's the case, right? Especially if we want to be considering this G2 squad's run in the uh, in the road to rio to be like a, a decent one right obviously they came second there kind of got blown out the water in the grand final and it was the danes besting them in astralis there danes just looking to join the ever-growing list of kryptonite to this g2 squad tristo with only a usp up here on the boost this round is pretty much a done deal right even though they've walked into the b stack there's not much these pistols can find g2 up four to one I think the key is to remember, Harry, you talk about, you know, going with G2 winning the map pick, going to a third. What's positive here is G2 haven't picked dust. And when G2 don't pick dust, they win dust. That's the key. If uh, if your opponent picks dust, G2 usually pick it up. So going for an Inferno pick is certainly a curveball, but it's nice to see them move away from the, the, the problem that has been that map. You know, losing when they pick, winning when they lose. Certainly doesn't make sense. Certainly isn't consistent, but it is coming through in a third of this series. That's if North can't put up a fight here on Inferno. They've got an orb, though, onto the TK. Is he fighting Bernardo? He doesn't realize they're a pass with smoke, and Hunter's got to kill through the wall. Christo's nade does trade, and it puts things back into four on four. Hunter's still committed, though, and he's 13 and one. He has to be feeling so confident, so ready to take every fight, and for good reason. A quick kill into B it is traded by the AWP of MSL. He is all that stands here, and that might be enough to send G2 back in, to send G2 out of this site. Amanek hanging around to throw utility and catches MSL. He's moving into B. Oh, this is a mess. Molly down his feet. Smoke lands as well. G2, they, they should just get out of here. They've done so much utility. They've forced a rotation from north, and they should know about that as well, but still looking to commit up against the AWP. While Jax, all this is going down, he's lurking apps. 
Finally, the bomb is going to rotate back. Oh, and MSL misses the timing. He's just let a man behind him. And this is really going to add pressure onto Cajun B and his whole role in this round. He's going to come back and try and flush out Amanek. G2, they actually abandoned the A play. No. It's back to B. And Cajun catches the timing onto Amanek in CT. Oh dear, it's back to A for oh. G2. Let's go again. We'll run it back around the world and then back around the world again because you wanted to see it all the second time. Cajun. Here's them running across the long, and he's trying to play with the timings. The bomb is shut down at short, and Jack's left in the clutch. While he does put up the first 10 seconds, time might prove to elude G2 here. He's retrieved the bomb, and he is going to start to plug in those numbers, but he chooses to go for the gunfights. First kill found, but Gade is just hiding. Little tricky trickster, and even then wins out the fight after time. That's devastating. Luckily enough, Jack's had plenty of money. Because he certainly didn't make any there. Yeah, that's an unfortunate round for G2. The reason those rotations uh, happen there is, is G2, they back up to go towards A with Jax lurking. And then Amanek gets into spawn and he realizes it's just the AWP in B. There's no one else here. Guys, they must be running double A, rotate back. And at that point, when G2 rotate back, Cajun peeks from the CT spawn and shows that second B player's position. So G2 know it's a solo A setup and they try and beat it to the punch, but instead they will not. Uh, North do find a second. Important round for North. Like you said, it keeps the economy of G2 on its toes, considering Hunter loses everything there, or Jax rather. So, Hunter with the Galil. Don't know why the guy who's 14 and 2 has a Galil. Especially considering he not only had money for the rifle, but someone else could trade. Weird one. Either way, G2 looking to go fast into this A site. They're just waiting for those flashes. There they are, Gade up above. And Jax has jumped straight down short side like that. He avoids the apartments players and kills MSL the site. That's the Orpah gone. Rifle going to peek out. Gade gets one, but it's coming at a cost here. His position given up. Cajun has to provide some support. The Mollies are going to land deep, though. And Cajun's going to cross towards Gade. Smoke down on top of the Molotov. This is going to buy time here for North in the site. Kenny's killed a rotate off of B. That might be able to send the bomb back. They could go towards the empty site. AZ has also left and G2 are beating North there. Oh, but wait, G2, they've Ooh. said, actually, why don't we go back to A? How about those apples, guys? They set up outside of the A site. There is a rotation from AZ back around to B. They'll throw in some util. And now if you're G2, you've heard that molly go down. And you're thinking, ha, ha, ha. They've done it. They've fallen for it. But Gade hasn't. And AZ's even rotating back around. However, he's now the only man remaining. 10 seconds as this bomb plant comes through, and that's just not enough time for AZ to work his magic. So it will be the save here for North. Five on the board for the G2 squad. As these kind of very explosive plays into bomb size, and then a clear intention that they're leaving the option. Uh, oh, sorry, not like intention, but like a clear moment in every one of these rounds where the bomb was like almost going to rotate away and then just committing. But this is, you know, G2 really toying with North, really trying to throw this mid round into chaos and uh, and create as much confusion as they possibly can. I kind of love that from G2. You know, they, they do this a lot. They love just causing a bunch of uh, kind of chaos within the server and playing around it. And I think, you know, you look at this North squad and the situation they find themselves in, if there ever was a time to try and play that brand of CS versus MSL and the boys, I think it's definitely now. Yeah, I mean, standing, coach, anything, any reason, any drop in a five-man roster, any changes are a good time to, you know, really spice things up and try and, you know, get North in the doldrums with you. Mad stuff, mad times. But uh, right now, it's just the hero M4 and AZ saved from the previous round. He's up in the apartments, but they've actually already got past him. Look at Amanek, man. He's already in CT spawn. This round's just started. Cajun has spotted this play, and so AZ can move through the smoke to try and trade, but Amanek has no intention of backing up into AZ's crosshair here. Jax is, while entering into the apartments, AZ's going to push, and his players in ult, who somehow get away with guns. MSL's grabbed an AK and skirted out of there. B is being taken as we speak, but it's all coming down to this wrap of Amanek. He's going to find Cajun in the spawn. That gives away everything. MSL now knows this has to be a B play. That's where the two are coming. Chris Doe, the new boy on the block, on his own and not really up for the job with just the USP. Nice try. Yeah, he got the dink. Good attempt. You know, that is physically as much damage as he could have done in the amount of time he was given. 
But for MSL, it's just a saving game. And so he will get away with this AK. G2, they're not hunting. They're showing some mercy, and that's commendable. They're looking to hold on to these weapons and build up their own money a little bit. You know, they've had enough of slashing the hopes of the Danes. Instead, they're looking to make some bank in this round here and now. And they will get away with it. Six on the board. Already a much more commanding looking yeah. G2, right? Like Vertigo, I don't know, man. I think maybe they were a bit surprised by what North were bringing to the table. And maybe it was just one of these slow starts to the day. Because now they're looking fired up and they are bringing the yeah. heat here. I think the first. T side start is definitely key, right? Like if they started T side versus go, maybe it would have been a very different game. But I, I, they only had a couple of rifle rounds to get away with on Vertigo. And, you know, North just such a lead after not only 10 5 but also a pistol with conversions 13 5 before g2 found their first round so first rifle round so yeah i mean it was never meant to be but maybe on inferno it could be a whole different kettle of fish fast play for g2 they're feeling good and they're feeling fast they're going to get into b very quickly north is still constructing boosts man but it will still come through still getting a kill deagle spamming for az good for one but the trades favor g2 as they should and a bomb plant allowed will set north up for a retake that really isn't going to happen msl should just save and he probably will Oh, the deep smoke as well. Harry, we've been seeing so much of this in the Road to Rio as well. The, the, especially Furia loved this on Inferno. A, a great Inferno team to, to look at. But yeah, lots of deep utility into the CD spawn. This allows you to not only play around the tree and the ruins, but really just force the save, right? Like North would hang around and they would fight towards ruins because they know they can always exit CT. But without this, with this smoke in the way, North can't even get close. They can't even look for engagements because they, they can't see into the site. So... And seventh round taken by G2, Continue on, continuing a monstrous T side, but North at least get away with a gun. You don't have any shots at redemption left though if you're North, right? There's still a chance you can recover this half, there's still five rounds yet to be played. And their time to turn this around it could come here and now. That all back in the hands of MSL, I think, is going to be a big talking point. He might look to get stuck in with it early on. He's over here towards short side. And he's just holding this angle into mid. G2 looking like they want to try a fast explosive A play. Sorry, MSL, but Gade's got to apologize Ooh. for that one. Is they elude him in the apartments. Cage uh -oh. now trying to hold down the line, and he will put up the first Nexa, nice. wasting absolutely no time. Doesn't let that reload come through, but Christo has caught a man in rotation. Nexa now in the clutch, a 1v2 from inside this A bomb site. He gets that bomb down. And now looks to reposition. Now looks to take a foothold elsewhere on the map. He's wrapping around over here towards short. While this is going on, AZ and Christo, they're pushing in through apps and long, respectively. Next, to oh. wrapping. Christo oh. not looking this way. And next has just seen him there on the peak. Christo is not checking. And next has got this kill dead to right. There's very little time now for AZ. That kit is oh, paramount. Oh no. Smoke on the bomb. He's sticking it next to spraying, but he can't find the kill. Oh my goodness. G2, they hate bomb plants, man. They hate them. Yeah. I've never met a team that hates a bomb plant before. Nice try from Nexa. Like, really well navigated 1v2. Definitely. And a shame that he can't find AZ on the bomb. I was surprised that he planted for apps and then he took the long flank. And, and even when he took the long flank, he killed Christo before they knew where he was. He could have used that, the fact that he was walking behind Christo to get closer to the site to figure out where he was. Obviously, Gates going to be looking in that direction. It's a crossfire, but... You know, that's a, or, that's a really nice try. And it's not going to manifest the next up. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, that's, you know, the last round wasn't harsh enough. This one really is. He gets double naded. Doesn't even get to play into things. So the in-game leader removed from G2 to start the round. North. That's 
of a big consequence in their favor. They found one, they don't want to get reset. That could certainly help them avoid it. Gaze in the pit. We've got a four man A setup. If you count AZ in the spawn as well, he's got a crossfire, but he's already been shut up by the smoke. Christo, a dink, and nothing more. Cajun back of the site. He misses his shot. Amanek was so low, he didn't even land a bullet. Now it's down to Gade inside a pit. Jax is going to look for it, crossing towards it from the graveyard, but they haven't realized, they haven't seen him. They haven't traded information. Gade's finally going to get that knowledge, but it comes at a cost, the cost of his life. Hunter almost went for the knife kill, but he was going crying. for it, wasn't he? He was yeah. chasing that one for a little while, Ooh. and then I think what it led to the death of, I think that was Kenny, or I don't know, Jax. someone, yeah, it was Jax. But it's like, okay, maybe I should get the kill. Don't want to lose yeah. the round. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to like throw three guns away for the knife. Good round from G2 though. I love the pace right there. They're just full of, uh, you know, I, G2 is such a good team to to know when to go fast and when to go slow. And that's why I was so confused on Vertigo. They were just hounding the A site round after round on T side, not showing really anything, like any depth, any rotations, no mid takes. And I know G2 have way more to show for us. And I think they know that as well, right? When they underperform in series, they're very aware. Malik is their coach, it is very vocal about, you know, knowing that G2 can and should and hopefully will be better. Of course, I mean, this is a team making grand finals for crying out loud. It's not like they're sleeping, but, you know, the way that they lost the first map didn't really feel like the G2 we've been watching for these last couple of months. However, this one, 9 3 up on the T side of Inferno, this feels like the G2 we've been watching. Yeah, it really does. And um, we're getting that very, very explosive, very, very confident style of gameplay that we've come to love. North, they ain't loving it right now. They've called in a tactical pause. They're going to try and figure this one out. That's kind of interesting. They haven't won a single round by killing all five. They've had one defuse and two rounds, one to time. Damn. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> no, that I'll tell you that much. Like when you're reading it, you know, you're like, it's yeah, cool. that's cool for North, but also. That's really bad for North. <laughs> yeah. But that's just, I mean, you know, when you got Hunter alive, I think that's a key, right? He's 17 and 5. This man isn't dying. You can't kill him. He's not mortal. Who do you think you are? So, yeah, I mean, that, that's also a factor. But let's see if, if Hunter is killable after all, because North, they've got the guns, and these guns, well, they were made for killing, and that's just what they'll do. These days, these guns, well, they might walk all over you, Hugo. And that's what they're trying to do down here towards Ooh, Banana. The Nexa nades again. find a lot of damage. Again. Nexa. Yeah, not looking Get out healthy of there. there. Look at Amanek, man. He's been doing this round after round. He's like, long? Yep, wow. mine now. How's that for a change? Oh, Gade is not ready. But actually, Gade is ready. A quick flick back around. And suddenly, Amanek has been deleted. A man advantage is taken a G2. They are stranded uh -oh. in enemy territory. They are trapped at long side. Nexa has been kicked off be a response from Hunter. Jax is still an unknown entity. Um, that's the, kind of the worrying thing. With that peak from AZ, you don't know that Jax is this deep at long. And so maybe he can use this to his advantage. There's actually only two players for North inside of this bomb site. In spite of having control down deep banana, they're very, very worried about the potential of a CT wrap. So, oh dear. That's where the attention of a man like Christos had to be fixated right now. But with losing Jax at long, suddenly it does just come down to this two-man short push. You're pushing into an even odds crossfire. Then there's still players left on rotation. Yeah, this round, you know, if yeah. all the words I just said didn't sound unwinnable enough, Kenny, I just have to show us it is exactly that. I'm surprised Jax is the first to peak there, right? I see the logic for G2. It's a position that North are no longer considering, but the fact of the matter is that G2 could have easily baited North into the double setup on short and then Jax could have come out come out on long and, and definitely gotten a kill. But you've got pit players if you're north. You're watching long side. You're at least looking at the library. So, yeah, I mean, I love the position from Jax, but the fact that he goes first in the three on four maybe didn't seem like a, a great call there. Obviously, hindsight, but, you know, that's the luck. That's a one duel on his own that should be coming in on the backstab. And, well, he's the first of the party, first of the fight. And myself. Down Amanek to start this round. Now, Nexa, two rounds ago, he got grenaded, double naded, he was deleted. Last round, he got double naded, put to 20 HP at the start of the round. This round, he got double naded, put to 16 HP. He's really been getting beaten up by the utility of North in this half. So I'd love to see Nexa move away 
from these areas where North are going to grenade off of spawn. Because it's all happening from the same place at the same time. Nah, man. Next is just a masochist. He loves it, man. He loves that he's, he's getting, getting these nades early on. And then that gives him the energy. Ah. The, the, the happiness. The euphoria to keep on playing in this server. They keep putting these frags up. G2 setting up outside of this B bomb site. Only two players here for North. We're looking at AZ. We're looking at Christo to hold down this B bomb site. AZ, he gave us a phenomenal vertigo. And we want to see some glimmers oh. of that man here now in this B hole. What? Doubled up through the smoke. Last bullet, a parting gift onto Jax. Bye bye. And yeah, all right. Wanted to see AZ. Turns out. We did get to see AZ. G2 weren't so lucky, however. And he's just removed them all through the smoke. So of course he has. Five on the board for North. That's just not fair. I mean, North have come alive in these last few rounds, right? Like, it's still been... that That's their first two rounds in a row. Worth noting. But they've at least recovered from what was an extremely dominant scoreline. 7-2, 9-3. I mean, G2 have been all over it. North looking for a six at the end of the half. And it is still attainable. G2 don't have the AWP here. They had the money, but staying with the rifles. Oh, that's a big kill. Kenny, for good reason. He's got the spawn, and he's going to run it right up mid. He knows that North have a bit of a stack towards B. He hears all those grenades that Nexa has called, and G2 make an excellent call to try and beat these rotations on the A site. Not only is there only one man inside of A, that's Cajun. He's gone. But also, players on long haven't even come through the choke point. They're going to flash on through a Molotov. North go for it, but they've already lost his sight. Yeah, this bomb's rotating safely in through the apartments as well. However, this does like give a clear route for North up through mid, and all three players are going to be arriving at short side, maybe a little bit quicker than G2 are ready for. So let's see if they can use that to their advantage. They're actually going to slow right down. They're hoping that they can catch G2 moving into these post-plant positions. Now, that nade onto Amanek is huge, because he had this crossfire set up with the guys in the site, and that's now lo no longer available anymore. Hunter out from the apartment. And this leaves it all on MSL. He gets shut down and it's... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's G2 Esports taking on North here for the DreamHack Masters Spring 2020. Day one, of course, and only our second matchup. And our second map of it. North, they did take Vertigo. It was G2's pick. It was their pick, rather. And uh, they're a map up in this series looking to bounce back on the second half of G2's pick. It's a quick B play. Only one man here as well. Kenny is going to have to put up a hell of a fight. There is a retake kit available for G2, but Kenny's going to fall out without taking a kill. And that's actually okay for G2. They can play a Five on five retake, it's better than going in with a disadvantage. Yeah, Christo's sitting on this extra smoke. He can try and use that over here towards CT, perhaps, just to buy a bit more time for North. MSL holding for this peak and does manage the first. AZ's removed another in the meantime, and this is left North with a man advantage with this bomb down. It's looking good for the Dane. It's a block of French foot. Ooh. And they pretty much all get wrecked on the entry in from the uh, the ruins side. Obviously, next to throw it in there. Not really a Frenchman, but maybe like an honorary yeah. Frenchman. Close enough. <laughs> Close enough, yeah. Frenchman by association at this point. But yeah, I mean, North, they, they did win this this series last time they took on G2. Do you remember that was with Jumping? That was with the coach. So, you know, having Christo in this team certainly feels like an upgrade for North. Obviously, he's not someone that necessarily knows the inner workings, but it is someone who plays Counter-Strike at a competitive level. So that's, yeah, it's going to be more than Jumpy, who hasn't played a game for multiple years. But he really, I, I want to give a shout out to Jumpy. He really did show up in the RTR for North. But right now, it's a bit of a mess up top banana, and North aren't showing up at all. Only their bodies have arrived, and they've been put in bags very quickly. Kenny down mid, dropping one. There's the trade from it. But it's also left these T's in a two on three with guns at their feet, or more so at the feet of G2. I was going to have to regroup with Christo. There's only a solo A player, but Amanek has begun his rotation. And Nexa doesn't want to push B until he knows that this is definitely going to be an A take with the bomb and everything. So, Jax, no armor. He knows they're coming. Here's the utility. Do they have to check? The Deagle, so good at spamming. And he's going to get away with more than enough damage. Christo on 20. The new boy has to put up a clutch here for North if they want to keep this map going. Oh, and he's getting peaked by Amanek. The 5-7 makes quick work of him. And this force by from G2 gives them immediate results in the server. There's even weapons to be retrieved. And 11th now on the board for G2. 
I'm curious what the decision's going to be from North, right? Because yeah. like one of the one of uh, it's like one of the benefits of getting that bomb down is that you can just play an eco here and still have a buy in the future. But kind of flip side to that is the extra cash injection gives you even more to work with in this force buy. So they're going to decide to continue this back and forth, continue these force buy wars. And at this scoreline, that could be a risk for North, right? Yeah. If they lose this, suddenly they're ecoing, and they're ecoing at 12-6. That is not where you want to be. So this is high risk, high reward. They've taken the gamble. Is it going to pay off for them? They put it all on green. And maybe that's not the wisest investment. We'll see, though. Because every now and then, that roulette table, it spins in your favor. And North, they are rotating it as fast as they physically can. Setting up utility towards A. It's going to be a pop flash out towards the pit. Hunter, he's had a great game right now, and he's going to need to keep up appearances. They does good damage. Molly on short side. No one's there, though. They're all up apps. And not for long. Dropping into the pit, and Jax's waiting arms are there. He finds Christo. North and full smoke themselves into this position just to wait, just to hold off for these smokes to fade so they can take fights. But you know G2 are going to tuck in with an advantage. They're ready for this. Oh, good mollies. That's going to force G2 out. Hunter has to die. He has no choice. He has no say in the matter. Kenny is burning a little bit. He's getting tickled by the flames. We've got another man on short as well. Kenny putting up a kill. That molly should force him into the open. That would be his death. This is a great call from North. Really abusing their utility as they keep themselves in this three on three. The bomb drop. There's still no need to move out of the pit. Cajun has Glock armor. That is not the gun he wants right now. He needs a weapon. Jax is in the apartment, but he won't be following him in the hallway. Bomb has been planted. Bomb plant in at the very, very least for North and a chance now at even more. They've spotted Nexa. This double play up from Short is slowly but surely coming into fruition for G2. Cajun has been spotted, however, AZ doing damage. Has lost his teammate in the sight, and Cajun is only armed with a Glock. So this round falling onto his shoulders, nope. not ideal. And it's not going to come through. Defuse for G2. And even though it's going to be close, this will be a 12th on the board. They get the retake off, they deal with the force fight. That was scary. I mean, ten, five seconds, not even, would have made the difference, would have been the round there for North. So that's just such a shame that, that they weren't armed for it, right? They couldn't, they, they had no options. North just had to wait, right? Cajun can't play aggressive. He can't force fights because he's not got a gun to do so. So North, they just have to kind of let that one slip through their fingers. And G2, they're going to be very rich as a result. Losing players, obviously, but getting away with guns and an AWP in the hands of Kenny against a full eco from North. It's almost a guaranteed round for G2 at this point. Three on B, allows lots of utility to go down Banana before that rotation of Hunter comes through. And well, next is doing exactly what was done to him in the first half, right back the way of MSL. Then Hunter, get the eco kills. Go on, mate. There's a third. He'll get them all. It's nice and easy if your name's Hunter. 23 and 10, 133 <laughs> ADR, right? We're used to it now. This guy's on a tear, and unsurprisingly, the Glocks weren't able to beat him. Now, we all know that Hunter would have the edge here. It's this round here and now where it gets exciting. The buyback in for North. One last shot at redemption, it feels like before this map might just slip through the wayside and they've got all the AKs in the world to get them there, but no AWP on MSL. And that's gonna give Kenny a lot more room to maneuver with his. Hunter actually aggressing into alt mid and him and Kenny, quick as you like, they've taken a killer piece. So North, out of the gate, just tens of seconds into the round and they're already playing this in a three on five. Yeah, I mean, they have so much util to get out of this one, but that's a bit, big bit of info. Amanek just grabbed on B, spots two players. No bomb, but that will be coming in tow. G2 not even going to adjust any kind of rotation. I say that. Kenny S begins to move through CT, and that's the right call. You definitely want a 3B when you've just seen this setup from North. You have all this advanced positioning on A anyway, so... Strong rotation and loads of utility on this B bomb side. Nex has got a molly. Kenny's got a molly. Flash is available. Right now, they're probably just going to take straight fights. Kenny doesn't realize the player's crossed, but he's going he's to check for it. This is the timing, at least in the short term. He might go back for it later. That's easy. 
Hawks and North lining up Muse Hill. Molly's come in. Kenny waiting at the back of the site next to Molly into the fight, and he will go down. That will tempt North into this execute, but it also tempts him into the setup. G2 with two men here. Kenny's missed the cross. He doesn't know. There's two in the pool. There's two of the coffins. Amanek is inside of the smoke. This could still fall apart here for G2. The bomb getting planted. Kenny and Amanek get the kills as soon as they get off the plant. And now MSL in a clutch that he just can't win. Spam down by Hunter. G2 with a defuse, 14 rounds here, two away from taking us to dust two. And it's starting to feel like a bit of a lock-in, right? It is starting to feel like a bit of a guarantee. G2, they've had some struggles closing out games, but I don't know if this is going to be one of them. This buy from North lacking across the board. You've got players on Galil's, you've got a UMP for Cajun Beat. And once again, it looks like G2 are going to look to try and strip a man from the ranks early on. This flash is to set Hunter up for the mid peak. He spots a player in Vietnam and decides to just move away. So now AZ and Gade over towards the top of mid they go. No aggression at B from North. So this kind of feels like it's just got to be an A commitment from the Danes. G2 aren't really exploiting the space they've been given down at Banana, so they don't know about this yet. Ooh. Oh dear, Hunter, they're gonna go right past me. Here's every foot though, and he's gonna pop around the corner. Only one uh, felt like he could have been a double, but MSL quick on his feet does find the trade, puts North in an, in an advantage. And with the bomb plant down as well, it's almost like an extra man for G2 to play up against. Three on four on the retake. Smoke down at the long side. There's flashes available, but North aren't looking to get aggressive. It's G2, a man down, and uh, needing to fight back into this round. Yeah, two players from Cat. That's going to fall to Christo to try and hold on to, and that Molly will keep him out of the pit. This allows them to close the distance a bit at short side. They do find the first two, three kills on the back of it. It's only AZ. Oh dear, how's this one slipped away from North? Someone's going to get on the bomb, and AZ is oh! popping them. They line up for him, and it's three for AZ. A seventh on the board for North. And a chance to keep this series burning. This is pretty yeah. cool as well. We get a little insight into the North camp. I didn't know we had this. How you doing, gentlemen? Oh, they can't hear me? <laughs> oh. I don't think that'd be fair on the opponents. But yeah, it's nice to have a little uh, look into North's boot camp at FC. So... One round, that's it. That's all North have gotten since the pistol. And it's here and now. So if they do lose it, instant reset from G2. Kenny with the AWP is going to be pushed back. Molotov is landing and there's nothing he can do about it. North are still looking to commit here with the Molotov landing at the corner. They just want to take top B first and default during the apartment. No rush to an execute here for North. Just going about the necessities. Definitely wanting top mid if they are to commit B, just to deny that info from G2. Still lining up alongside Smoke, and North are going to execute out middle by the looks of things. Bomb with a Molotov there, and that's going to keep them away. He's actually trying to cross into the cubby. No. That's a pretty ballsy maneuver. Mold made next. Oh, the nade God. rains out, and it's an attempt at the bait and switch, and boy, did they fall for it. Now Hunter goes through this smoke. Looking to avenge his fallen brethren, and Hunter on a tear right now. A site belongs to G2, and they send out a very stern reminder in this round. Christo gets finished off. And it's map point for the uh, the G2 side. 15 to 7. One away from locking in Dust 2 as our third and final decider map here. Yeah, North, this T side's been a little bit flat, but G2 have been very good at re-aggressing and just making life a, a pain for North. Comfortable nowhere and pushing through smokes. Even with that shot, right? The fact that North don't check Cubby on long is because Nexus shot from the corner. Then he trades with Hunter. Hunter then shoots from either further back at the long corner near Library. And North think that the person who shot close is the person who fell back. Well, that's a, a safe assumption, you would think. 
but it was all by design by G2, and they find that round off the back of it. Big double for Nexa. Look at the money here of Four North. It's pistols. It's one Galil. It's certainly not a pretty picture. Full setup in mid for North. No one going towards B. They're going to take this one fast. Yeah, Kenny already preemptively falling back, trying to keep an eye on this long offensive. And that's not where the push is coming from. It's going to be down here towards short side. Hunter laying down the paint, helped out by Kenny's Molly. He's doubled up with a Molotov, my goodness. It's just Molly kills all the... There were three of them there in a matter of moments. And now North desperately trying to hold on. And it really is heating up here at the A bomb site. It's down to a two on two. Somehow North, they've grinded their way through this defense. But is it all in vain? AZ Ooh. with the Deagle, third kill in the round. And that leaves it all onto Amadek. MSL has even retrieved himself an AWP. He's looking to hold on to it. He's looking to deal with Amadek in this retake. AZ drawing the attention away from Pit. Smoke on the volley, but MSL holding the line. It's eight on the board for North. Still fighting, still trying to keep Inferno on the line. Yeah, I like that fake execute there, right? They throw the wall of uh, the wall of pit, or the pit wall smokes rather. Uh, the, the completely get, you know, uh, the CTs looking at the apartments expecting that burst, and then they just come out of short, all congregated together. North don't drop out of the hallways, instead they pick up a round, and eight on this T side. Let's use money on its last legs, at least for this set, as they have MP9s in play alongside the AWP, pushing the apartment by two. The wallbangs look good, but Nexa and Jax come out with kills here for the CT side. They are able to escape as well, and that is of huge consequence. North are grouped in B with three. They're going to decide to completely rotate out of there. No one even going towards the B side of things for G2. They're just going to hold on, because on a five on three, no one needs to adjust. No one needs to stack. Gamble isn't necessary, so... There will be a rotation coming out from Nexa just to bolster that B-bomb site, but G2 are going to be able to pull that back pretty quickly once they realize the error of their ways. Hunter on long, throwing a flash and falling back, looking to play safer in the site. He doesn't really have the gun to fight long. And if he falls back, that's going to give a lot of room for North to take a flank here. Nexa's cleared out Banana. I think at this point, yep, G2, they've realized the penny has dropped and they're running right back towards A. Yeah, and if you look, Jax, or Kenny rather, is very aware that they could have pushed up over here towards Long. He could be looking to wrap CT. That's almost a lineup for Kenny. Now MSL has his attention peeled away. He's having to waste precious seconds here. Oh, keeping wraps on this man oh. at Long. The wrap, the, the wrap round is in. The flank comes through.